Welcome to the Salvia Divinorum Diaries, Part 5. Part 4 and Part 5 are all on the same bike trip. Pretty sure, if I remember correctly, what I did was is I took the Amtrak into Tucson and I rode from Tucson all the way to Amarillo, Texas. No, I remember now. I took the Amtrak to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I rode from Albuquerque to Amarillo, Texas. When I got to Amarillo, I bumped into some deadheads that were heading to a dead show in uh, Brooklyn. So I hitched a ride with them, and they gave me a ride all the way to Chicago. I was going to go all the way to Brooklyn with them, because I was heading to New York. And uh, I had a big falling out. There's just one of them that didn't like me very much. I didn't like him. And uh, basically, you have to get out. You come to a town, and everybody scatters and goes out and hustles, does panhandling. And hustles up some cash, and the guy with the van, the guy that owns the van, he's the captain, basically, you know. And you can, you have to make up enough money, you can pocket some of it yourself. He doesn't know how much you made, but you give him some money to pay your way, to pay for gas, and food, whatever, you know, hotel rooms, or whatever you're going to do. And uh, I was doing pretty good, better than everybody else, actually. And so a lot of the other, there was like, I was the four, there's four guys. And I, you know, there was three when I bumped into him, and I, I was the fourth. And I was doing better than all of them. And the guy that was driving the car wasn't doing shit. He was just driving us, and it was his it was his truck, though. But anyway, it all came to a head in Chicago. We were right, we were in front of that Lincoln Tower or whatever it's called, big skyscraper in downtown. And uh, we bumped into some girls in uh, Springfield, and they had a car, but it wasn't running very good. They, you know. Guys wanted some girls along. They were young and cute. And they said, we want to go to the dead show too. By the time we got to Chicago, their, their car kind of conked out on them in, uh, in front of that building. We had to pull over there and try to fix it. I don't know what happened. All I know is that when, I was, when we were in front of there, I saw this big black guy trying to fix a tire, uh, trying to fix a flat. And for some reason, he, was a real, he didn't have a jack. So I was like, I had a feeling. I said, hey man, let me help this guy fix his tire. I mean, he didn't have a jack. And he looked desperate. He's like, oh, God. I could see he was going through it. So I got the, uh, the guy's name was Blackie that owned the truck. Uh, this is his nickname, his deadhead name or whatever. I'm like, hey, Blackie, let me buy a jack and go help that guy. I got a funny feeling this could turn out good if I help him. Go ahead. So I went over there. Hey, man, you need some, you don't have a jack. You need some help. I see you're, yeah, man. And I got, I helped him jack the car up and, you know, helped him fix his tire. He was like, thanks, man, you saved my bacon. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't know, what, give, give, give you some money. I said, you got any weed? He's like, I got you. And he gives me this nice eighth of weed. He had like dozens of them in another baggie, and he gave me like an eighth. I'm like, oh, cool. And I ran over to the truck, and I'm like, hey, dude, I got some weed. And they're like, cool. And I'm rolling up a joint. And all of a sudden, the other guy comes up and goes, hey, uh, you need to give that to Blackie, all of it. I'm like, what the hell for? I just, he said, you used his jack, this his car, you, Everything that you come up with is his. I'm like, hey, fuck that. I'm like, oh, okay, you know what, here. And he kind of got shitty with me, like, yeah. Break it on down, bitch, or something like that. I'm like, what the fuck did you say? Because like, he was walking away, and I jump out of the truck. He was walking over there to the car where they were trying to help the girls with their car. And I rush up on him. What the fuck did you say, dude? I'll fucking tear your head off. And he pulls, pulls out a knife on me. I got a knife, too. I pull it out. I'm like, bust it open. I'm like, Really? want to fucking stab me and everybody said hey no stop uh, and the guy that pulled out the knife on me was talking shit he started running because he got scared all of a sudden because I, I had been mr nice guy and been acting all meek and humble you know to get along with everybody to, to get the ride but he just pushed me too far and all that i just show him the real me and he got scared he thought dude this guy's gonna fucking yeah try to pull a knife on me i'm like yeah really click Let's do this. And he ran. And then Blackie's like, just get out of here, man. You're, you're kicked out of the truck. We don't want you around here anymore. Oh, hey, fine. I ran over there, grabbed my bike, and took off. But anyway, I continued on. I rode all the way to New York City. I rode all the way to Jacksonville, Florida. I rode all the way to Austin, Texas. And then I turned around and went back because I was making so much money in this town called Gulf Breeze, uh, Florida, that I said, I'm going to come back here it was like almost Thanksgiving. I made a gang of money. I'm like, I'm coming back here for Christmas. It's like another month. No, it was before Thanksgiving. It was like six weeks, seven weeks before Christmas, maybe eight weeks. 
But I'm thinking, dude, I want to come back here for Christmas. It's going to be good. Again, it's going to be warm. It's, you know, Florida, okay? So I rode all the way to Austin, Texas. Then I turned around and rode back. But before I got back there, no, I did. I made it all the way back to Gulf Breeze. Mosquitoes are coming out. And uh, I was panhandling at this good spot that I was panhandling for. I was making good money. But all of a sudden, I seen these uh, these two kids pull up in their, tr their their car, park in the parking lot. They're close enough to me to see what was going on. And it looked like they were smoking something. I, I, they were just, they were doing something. They were in the parking lot partying. But it didn't last very long. All of a sudden, I just seen them roll down the window and something got thrown out the window and they just took off like the, you know, like bat out of hell. I'm like, what the hell did they just throw out? And I went over there. It was a package of this Salvi Divinorium. The little, they were like 16 year old kids with the car. <clears throat> they went and bought some of that shit at the head shop. Loaded a bowl, smoked it, scared the shit out of them, and they didn't want it anymore. <laughs> okay, I'm like, I'll take this. I don't know why. Something was so, don't, man, not again. You're not going to do this again. The last time it scared the shit, it scares the shit out of you every time you do it. Why do you keep doing this? I just wasn't through with it, man. I needed uh, something about it. I just, it was showing me stuff that I needed, I guess. Even though it's highly, it does untold damage to the human body, especially if you smoke it. <laughs> anyway, I waited until later on that night, until it was dark that night. There's a McDonald's and there's like an auto supply store. But behind the auto supply store, there was a uh, a picnic bench you could sit on. It was real dark back there and nobody came back there. And, you know, I was safe. The cops weren't going to see me. And so I rolled up another fat joint of this stuff like I did the last time I did it. Lit it up, took a puff. About half the joint burned up instantly. It was one full of smoke. Let it out. Felt like I was hollow, like the wind was blowing through me. And tasted and smelled sage with my soul. All of a sudden, it's just like, here comes the force over me again. Here comes the, the this powerful force taking total control. It's just surrounding me, and it's got me. There ain't no, it doesn't matter where I go. It's, it's, there, ain't no, it, there ain't no escaping from it. I'm done. I, got, I just have to sit there and take whatever's going to come. I tried to get away. I grabbed my bike, and I'm like dragging it. I'm on the ground crawling away like I'm trying to get away from like machine gun fire in a war or something. And I just keep dragging it back till I get up against the, the fence and just like, Pin my back against the fence looking around. No demons this time. No angels. Kind of felt God. Kind of felt Jesus, but not really. It's just the force surrounding me this time. All of a sudden, I look up into the distance, up in the sky. And I could see a car coming around the mountain. Driving around a curve, getting down lower, it's coming down the hill. And then there's another one. See, cars driving, you know, up in, you know, above me, coming down off the hill, big mountain. There's about five or six of them. Guys, there ain't no mountain in Gulf Breeze, Florida. It's flat as a pancake. Okay? And they all, next thing you know, they're on the street. And I'm like, I've got to go, you know, see what's going on. And then I'm kind of like standing up looking. And they, and they kind of just, they get, I'm behind the building. So when they get to the point where they're on the street and the building's between me and them, I can't really see what's going on. Then they, they get past the building and they pull into the McDonald's parking lot. And they're all cruising through the parking lot. Dude, these cars are... Or trippy looking. I get up and I push my bike over there. I'm standing right next to where they're having to drive right by me. And they're like, there's a Corvette. There's some kind of badass Cadillac. All new cars. Like a Dodge uh, Charger. One of those like Dodge Demons. I don't know what else. Something else nice. And they're, they've got like... Li the, the, the Underneath there's lights under... Lighting up the wheel wells and they're painted underneath the wheel wells and there and there's like strobe lights and stuff up underneath the, the the cars. And the windows, the windshield, the windows, the back windows are completely black. You can't see nothing inside those cars. And I knew whoever's in those cars were cruising by. They're stopping, checking me out and keeping on cruising. Guys. 
they weren't human in those cars, okay? I don't know what they were. But they weren't human. I knew that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And they're checking me out. They just come down out of the sky, landed on the ground, and started driving. Let me put you that way. And I was trying to be showing some bravado or whatever. <clears throat> I started talking shit. That's checking me out. I'm checking you out. What are you going to do? And they kind of like, the fuck are you looking at? I was scared, actually. But I wasn't showing it. And they drove around, went around the parking lot, and went out the parking lot. And I walked out into the street. They cruised the street a couple times, real slow. The, the second time they pulled around, I was standing right on the sidewalk by the street, and they did it again. They were banging on me. They didn't roll down the windows. Couldn't see in anything inside those cars. I was trying to. I was like trying to backlight them with lights behind them to see if I could see any kind of shadow in there. Nothing. It was like they weren't windows. They were like pieces of metal painted black. And they were just driving them with psychic powers or something. I don't know. The second time they cruised by real slow checking me out, this time they peeled out and took off. This time I'm coming down. I'm like, oh God, I had this little camp spot where I could get in a garbage can enclosure, but there's no, it was a closed down, you know, vacant building. There's no garbage can in the enclosure. And I went back here and locked myself in it. And no comfort from the Lord this time. It's just, I was on, on my own. And I went to sleep. And of course, it, the experience took me months and months to get over again. I just, I'd just done some like four months before. On the same trip that I found on the side of the road too. Or found somebody discarded it. Wasn't the last time it happened though. It was the last time it, I intentionally did Salvia Divinorium. But it happened one more time. But that's it. Tune in for the next episode.